Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, I've got a HP Pavilion laptop here with a bust cooling fan. So when I turn the laptop on, it lights up and pops up with a message saying system has detected the cooling fan is not operating correctly. Um, so this is how we know there's an issue and then in a moment it'll turn itself off or I'll just press the power button to do that anyway. So um, as per the message, it means the cooling fan is not working. That is the CPU cooling fan, which is about there on this laptop, I believe. Um, and it has detected that the fan is not spinning and therefore not cooling. Uh, occasionally the fan might be spinning, but it might be spinning at a slow speed or it might be intermittently working. Um, I have messed around with these many times and the long and the short of it is if you see the message, just replace the fan. Don't mess about with it, just replace the fan. So I'm going to show you how to take this thing apart and replace it. The replacement fan I've got here today, I bought mine on eBay. Um, I just searched for the model number of the laptop. So in this case, this one is a... Uh, uh, this one is a HP 15-AB series. So I searched, I went on eBay and I typed in 15-AB fan and I bought this one for, I think it was seven or eight quid, something like that. They're not particularly expensive. If you don't have eBay in your area, you may also be able to find them on somewhere like AliExpress as well and order one in from China. So that's the replacement part. This is the laptop. Let's take this thing apart. So the first thing we're going to do is turn it over, pop the battery out, make sure we're in the unlocked position. Uh, and we need to take all the screws out the bottom of the laptop. So on this one, all the screws are actually exposed, although there might be one underneath one of these two. So we'll take that off as well. Um, HP laptops, there's often a hidden screw underneath the rubber feet. On this one, the screw is visible. However, if you can't see screws on these parts here, check underneath the rubber feet. They're often there. There's lots of variations of this particular chassis that all look slightly different, but the concept of taking them apart is the same. So let's buzz out these screws. Let's have a sneaky look underneath these covers and see if there's any screws hiding there. And yes, there is a screw there. So when I remove these, I just place them down directly adjacent and then you won't lose them, such as in your hair. And yeah, we've got another one there as well. In case anyone is curious, this electric screwdriver I'm using is the Secure SQES126. And I'll leave a link to this in the description down below. It will be an affiliate link and I get a small kickback every time someone buys one. Got a couple more screws here and we should find a couple more screws under these feet as well. Yep, one there. This is a metal prying tool, which you can find on places like eBay. Um, plastic prying tools are a bit safer if you're new to disassembling computers. Now oh, that's gone not sticky anymore, put that to one side. Plastic prying tools are a bit safer if you're new to disassembly. However, metal prying tools are faster once you're a bit more experienced. Be careful with metal ones because if you use them a bit too early, you can leave marks on the laptop. I'm going to start brushing away dust as I go as well. All right, now we've taken all the screws out of the bottom. We're ready to take out the top case. So I'll open the laptop up and I'm going to use my prying tool just to dig in between the grey and red casings. And we're just looking for those little clicks that just signify the case popping apart. There we go. 
Right, now we've separated the top and bottom case. I'm going to flip the laptop over so that the screen hangs off into my lap and I should just be able to lift off that bottom piece. Oh, I need to close the lid. There we go. So here's our cooling fan and as a very quick assessment as to its condition, um, we can do two things. Firstly, if I just try and turn that with my finger, it does turn, but that's really stiff. That's jammed completely. I can physically turn it, but it feels like it's full of sludge. Um, it should spin freely. If I unpack my replacement fan, and we can use this as an example of what it should look like. So with this fan, as you can see, if I just give it a spin, it spins freely. And I can just spin that and it will freewheel. This one, absolutely nothing, that's solid. So we can definitely see that that needs to be replaced. The amount of dust around here and on the hinge and stuff alludes to what has happened to this thing. It's just gone solid. Because this has gone solid, we don't know how long the laptop has had insufficient cooling for either. So while I'm here, I'm also going to remove the um, I'm also going to remove the heat sink and the cooler and put some fresh thermal paste on it because where it's had no cooling, we have reason to believe that the laptop has been overheating. So uh, let's take this out. I'll disconnect the fan and buzz out the screws holding it in. Take out the dust bunnies. So it's quite common to see dust underneath the fan like this as well. These HPs, they intake through the keyboard as well as um, from underneath the laptop. In fact, does this one actually have a lower intake? It does. Um, but it's quite common to see a lot of dust around this section of the keyboard where it's been pulling in through the keyboard as well, which is a terrible idea, but this is HP. Uh, so we'll stick that fan to one side. Uh, and we'll also remove this heat pipe. So let's uh, let's take out these screws. And I'll just give that a bit of a wobble to free it up. Oof, that's delightfully crusty. Yeah, that's that's pretty dead. Yeah, all right. So we're going to need to clean all of that up and put some fresh thermal paste on as well. And one more thing I'll do while I'm here, because people will uh, people will have a go at me if I don't, is I'm going to check the RTC battery as well. This guy should be at uh, at least 3 volts. And we'll just check how he's doing. While we have the laptop apart, it makes sense just to check other things. And it's at 3.2 volts. This battery is fine. I usually say that a battery is good if it's at 3 volts. Uh, if it's lower than 3 volts, it should probably be replaced. Um, you can argue about that. Um, but 3.2 volts, no problem at all. May as well be fresh. Good. Okay, right. Um, I'm going to take this out the back to my air compressor and just blow all of the dust off of it. If you don't have an air compressor, you can either use cans of compressed air or you could use a soft cloth or a soft brush. Um, and we'll just remove all of that surface dust. Right, now that's looking a bit better. We'll just clean the thermal paste off of the CPU as well. So I'm gonna just take some kitchen towel and I'm gonna spray a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on it. Uh, if you don't have isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol, that's fine. You can use window and glass cleaner, spray a little bit onto your towel and that will also help. If you've got absolutely nothing, you can just use towel, uh, loo roll or kitchen towel dry. Just adding a little bit of cleaning fluid will just make this job easier, but it's not critical. And I'll just brush the chunks away. There we go. 
Now I'll just do the same with the uh, with the cold plate. And I've just toothbrushed clean the radiator fin or the fin stack as well. So that cooling, if you can even call that a cooler, but better than a better than a tin plate, I guess, which you do see in a lot of laptops. Anyway, that's that sorted out. The thermal paste I'm going to be using is Arctic MX4, which is an all-rounder thermal paste. Although pretty much anything will do on a device like this. I would just avoid using the cheapest Chinese ones because they don't last long. They separate out into a goop and like a weird liquid. Whereas uh, Arctic MX4 tends to have very good lifespan on it. You can put this stuff on and just forget about it. So I'll put just a little bit on the CPU die. And a little bit on the PCH. So the PCH, which is the second die on the chip, um, sometimes these are cooled and sometimes they are not. Um, on this laptop, we could clearly see that the PCH had thermal paste on it, coupling it into the cold plate. Um, on some laptops, there's either a hole in the cold plate um, or there's specifically no thermal paste on the PCH. And that is because the PCH doesn't want to run at the same temperature as the CPU die itself. Um, so if there's no thermal paste, don't add any. If there is thermal paste, then put some on. That's my policy. I think it's reasonable to assume that HP knew whether that should have thermal paste on it or not. So I'm going to work with what it was originally shipped with. Now we can put these screws back on. And I shall put them on in a staggered pattern, which helps the thermal paste spread out evenly. And we'll pop our new fan into place. I did see a question pop up recently about buying fans um, and whether a slightly different fan would work and so on and so forth. Um, in, the short, in the short sense, if the screw holes line up and the connector is correct, it's fine. So we don't like... We could have bought a fan that was exactly the same model number as the original one that we pulled out. Um, but again, this one will work just fine. The laptop is targeting a temperature. The laptop is targeting a temperature, not a fan speed or anything like that. So if the, if the CPU is still above the target temperature, it will speed up the fan. If the CPU is below target temperature, it will slow down the fan. The laptop itself doesn't care about exactly how good the fan is. It will just speed it up or slow it down as required. So uh, any replacement fan that physically fits in is fine. And that's that done. So we're ready to bolt this thing back together again now. And just before we start putting it all back together again, I'm just going to tighten up the hinge screws as well, just because if these guys come loose, the hinge snaps and breaks. So. We'll just take a bigger screwdriver and just give those guys a friendly tweak. Just try and put a quarter or an eighth of a turn into all of them. That's fine. There's only two here and one here. The other ones are case screws. So we'll remember to give those guys a special tweak when we put the case cover back on because those are structural. So that now just slips back over the top of everything. And we should just be able to click this on now. Click, click. And let's put in those uh, hinge screws first so we know those are done properly. And we'll give those a tweak up. And now we can put on the covers and then put the long screws in and tweak those as well. Sometimes these covers don't like going on properly and you just have to kind of jiggle them until they go in.
and tweak, tweak. There we go. And now the rest of the case screws can go in. These little screw covers, um, this one is still sticky, so I can just replace that one over the top, and that's fine. This one, there's a little bit of stick there. If I just give this a little bit of heat, uh, I'll use my hot air station on minimum heat for that. Um, we should be able to revive this stickiness. So just find a heat source, um, uh, even just sort of hold it against a heater or a radiator for a couple of seconds just to bring the glue back, and it'll probably go sticky again. Failing that, just use a tiny drop of super glue or something like that, and it'll be fine. And now I'll just check those lines. There's a couple more clicks to be had here, I think. Good, that's all sorted. So just before I put the battery back in, I'm gonna give this thing a good clean, and get rid of all of this horrible muck. As usual, I'm gonna start with uh, Tesco window and glass. This is just ordinary glass cleaning fluid. It's water and vinegar based. Uh, avoid any brands that use um, anything stronger than that. Just water vinegar is all you need. Uh, so I'm just gonna give that a spritz, just a single spritz onto each and wipe it down. Then turn to the dry side of the cloth and buff to dry. Back onto the wet side of the cloth for the screen. And back to the dry side again. And then just chase out any streaks that you've got that sometimes appear if there's been a bit of smudge there or something. There you go, that's better. Now I'm gonna turn my cloth completely inside out so we have a dry, unused section. And I'm gonna use Mr. Sheen Multi-Surface Polish. Same stuff that you'd wipe down your coffee table with. Pledge is fine as well. And I'm just gonna shield the screen and just sh spray this onto the keyboard and case only. Dry side. And now we'll just do the top cover with the same detail. Pop the battery in. There we go, that looks about a hundred times better. Let's turn it on and we should find there's no more error message and it should just go straight to start up. Like that. There we go. I'm gonna take this into software servicing now, but past that, that's all of our hardware stuff done. So thank you very much for watching everyone. As always, my support links are down in the description below for my Patreon, my Discord, my Twitter, and my Instagram. And if you enjoyed the video, hit the like up, the, the like up, Hit the thumbs up button because that helps me out and it also tells YouTube that you want to see more videos like this one. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time. Bye!